topping today's news, debate begins on the new anti-gang laws. A man shot and killed while walking in Ridgeland Park. Police say 75 people on bail in 2023 committed murder. And another group of migrants repatriated to Haiti while the Bahamas names its team for the World Relays. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Jorino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News, and it is a pleasure to have you join us. Today in the House of Assembly, Prime Minister Philip Davis began debate on the new Anti-Gang and Penal Code Amendment Bill 2024, which will be a part of the government's larger anti-crime fighting initiative. Mr. Davis says some aspects of the anti-gang laws may be harsh, but so are the impacts of gang violence on our communities. He says the new legislation will empower law enforcement and the judiciary. This landmark piece of legislation gives law enforcement and the justice system powerful new tools in the fight against criminal gangs. For decades, the Bahamian people have been demanding more direct action against gangs. Each time a gang-related act of violence makes the news, and it happens far too often, the frustration, the fear, and the anger of our people are palpable. Today, we are seeking to make it clear that this administration is willing to take on the organized gangs who destroy lives and communities. The Prime Minister says enough is enough and the hammer must come down on gangs and their leaders. We cannot tolerate the cycles of violence and retaliation that leave entire communities in fear. We cannot tolerate the gangs who have such contempt for the rest of us that they recruit our children, turning lives of promise into lives of peril. And we cannot lose another generation of our young men. We cannot let the young Bahamian men, who could and should be our heroes and leaders, become instead victims and perpetrators. These are young men whose strength and talents our country needs. But instead, too many are taking parts that lead to incarceration or death. The Prime Minister says it is his hope that current and would-be gang members understand that law-abiding citizens are tired and angry and will no longer accept the gang culture and the violence that comes with it as Bahamians deserve to feel safe in our homes and in our communities. Deputy leader of the Free National Movement, Shannon Cartwright, led the opposition in debate on the new anti-gang bill and raised concerns about the specifics of the new legislation and how gangs and gang members will be identified under the law. And so this anti-gang bill, though very, very important, Madam Speaker, no doubt, and is crucial, and we are in support of this bill, we do have some concerns about some legal uncertainty. What would dictate the standard of what a gang member, a gang member is? Uh, and then it talks about the question we had is that the Honorable Member Vicar Michael said that they had to be declared a gang before prosecution, but it does not specifically state that in the legislation. Mr. Cartwright is suggesting an amendment to the legislation that would provide clarity on the subsequent consequences of gang involvement. The St. Barnabas Member of Parliament says the clarifications would be crucial in making the process of prosecuting gang members more efficient. In the end, the opposition supports the new anti-gang legislation. A 36-year-old man is the latest homicide victim, and police are actively seeking his killer in another shooting believed to be gang-related. Reports indicate that around 10.15 p.m., the man was walking on Antal Avenue in Ridgeland Park 
when a dark-colored Japanese vehicle pulled alongside him. A man got out of the car armed with a high-powered weapon, shooting him multiple times before fleeing. The victim was shot in the upper torso, yet managed to run to a nearby business establishment where he collapsed. Emergency medical personnel took him to hospital where he succumbed to his injuries. Investigations continue. In December of 2023, Anton Monroe, who is accused of a 2020 murder, asked the judge to cancel his bail because he felt unsafe released onto the streets. This after growing concerns over an alarming trend that saw many individuals on bail either recommitting serious crimes or becoming victims of serious crimes, in particular victims of murder. Well, according to Commissioner of Police Clayton Fernanda, Monroe had good reason to be concerned for his safety as there were a large number of people on bail for murder who reoffended or became victims of murder in 2023. 75 suspects that were on bail committed murder. 33 victims were killed while they were on bail. 25 victims were killed while they were being electronically monitored. Uh, we continue to uh, be proactive in trying to prevent some of these murders from continuing to happen. Earlier this year, the government announced an amendment to the Bail Act that would ensure bail is automatically revoked for people who violate their bail conditions in an effort to prevent those on bail reoffending. In 2023, Commissioner Fernanda also said he is concerned about people on bail for serious crimes traveling to the family islands and committing crimes while wearing ankle monitoring devices that require them to be here in New Providence. Also, just this week, the commissioner informed that they will be sending additional manpower to Abaco because of an increase in crime and gun violence on that family island. And finally, in this segment, like we said a moment ago, with a number of recent murders occurring on Abaco, Police Commissioner Clayton Fernanda has announced that police will be sending additional manpower to that family island. Commissioner Fernanda says after the April 13th shooting of a businessman in Dundastown, Abaco, police are focused on addressing the increase in murders on multiple family islands, including Abaco. Last week, Commissioner Fernanda said Abaco was adequately staffed, but at a press briefing on Monday, he had this to say. Uh, I am concerned about Abaco. I'm um, concerned about Abaco with respect to recent uh, shootings, and uh, that is being addressed with my senior team and Miss Knowles and her team down in uh, Grand Bahama and Abaco. Uh, we have to pay attention to our family of islands, and you saw that trickle uh, down in Harbor Island, Elutra. Uh, there are areas that you see uh, crime, serious crime, continue uh, to pick up. So we have to review where we are and uh, where it's necessary for additional manpower and uh, some operations, intelligence-led operations. We will do just that. Commissioner Fernanda shared just how police intend on boosting the manpower on a number of our family islands. This way, our reserve uh, will come in place. Our reserve we have the resources I will be sending a rotation on these family of islands uh, to continue that presence out there. And I'm talking about not only uh, that presence in there, uh, but intelligence-led operation. Uh, we're going to do just that to assist uh, the family islands to uh, boost up the boots on the ground and to target those prolific offenders who continue to reap havoc on the various family islands. Police have confirmed that they are noticing a pattern of offenders leaving New Providence and moving to the family islands and taking their bad habits with them. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials.